Hey folks, welcome back to Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar. It's not a week after the last inspiration video I shot. It's like three weeks. I've been trying to get my channel schedule figured out so that I can actually get writing stuff done, which is the primary thing that needs to happen. The promotion of the writing stuff with videos like this is secondary. So um, this channel will update every two weeks. I updated the mystery channel, which is now, it has undergone a name change. It is now Marta's Magical Mystery Class. Um, this channel is still Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar, and I'm gonna be updating them on alternating weeks. So this week, it's the Sci-Fi Channel, um, the Sci Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar Channel. Um, next week is the Mystery Channel, and we'll just go back and forth. Um, I will essentially be covering the same thematic content in each class, but the examples will be different. Uh, over on the Mystery class, I'll be using examples from mystery writers. Over here, science fiction and fantasy and paranormal fiction, and I'm using sci-fi as a catch-all. So, um, I will also, there will be books in common on both channels that apply to good writing in general, okay? Um, so, this is video two in our sequence on inspiration. Uh, the last time I talked to you all about inspiration, I talked about reading, reading as much as you can get your hands on, reading as much as you have time for. Even if that means if you've got a precious little time to write during a given week, uh, that you split that time between reading and writing. That's how important I think it is to read because it's going to change so much about how you write. You're gonna learn so much about writing just by reading. Um, so I promised Last time I recommended getting your hands on science fiction short stories, and there's no shortage of the same. This time I am recommending that you get your hands on some craft of writing books, okay? Books that are gonna directly instruct you on how to do this, the kinds of things if you took a fiction class, you might run across in that class. Uh, the first of those craft of fiction books I'm gonna recommend is Walter Mosley's This Year You Write Your Novel. I just finished reading it myself last week. Great short book. I use my Kindle to pick it up, um, but I believe it's available in other formats as well. Um, Mosley does, any of you who have not yet written a first novel, um, Mosley is doing you new novelists the fantastic favor of giving you just the basics of what you need to know. He's not trying to overwhelm you or inundate you or intimidate you with tons and tons and tons of information. He is not just a master writer, he is a fantastic teacher. Um, and he is going to, uh, what he does that I think is just brilliant in this year you write your novel is to give you what you need to know without a lot of other stuff. Um, so that you can kind of buzz through that and feel like you've got some good basics on hand and go forward with the confidence and the knowledge you need to get started on your novels. I also am going to recommend this book. Uh, this is, and I, I believe this is the kind of thing that gets updated periodically, but this is Writing Science Fiction and Fantasy. 20 Dynamic Essays uh, by the field's top professionals uh, from the editors of Analog and Asimov's. This is actually a kind of a dated copy of this particular anthology. This was done in the mid-90s, so some of the essays are from that period, but it's also dated somewhat intentionally in that some of the essays in here go all the way back to the 40s and 50s. They're trying to capture uh, some classic essays on the craft of science fiction as well. Uh, it's a terrific resource. Uh, there are some hard to find things in here. Robert Heinlein and John Campbell's essay on their science fiction formula is in here, and that's, believe me, hard to get your hands on. Uh, Poole Anderson has a terrific hard sci-fi essay 
on world building. It's wonderful. Uh, Connie Willis has an essay on how to how impossible it is to write comedy and how to do it. Um, Jane Yolen's essay on writing fantasy is wonderful. So this has all kinds of good stuff in it. Um, and it's broken up into multiple sections. The only thing I would caution you about, the final section contains a lot of information about the mechanics of submitting stories to magazines. That process has changed radically since the mid 90s. So the information on that section largely does not apply, except yes, please do use your spell check. Um, the other craft book I highly recommend is actually, um, I know I've gone on and on about how wonderful N.K. Jemison's single author collection of short stories, How Long Till Black Future Month, is. Um, another single author collection I'm going to go on and on about is Octavia Butler's Blood Child. It's a considerably smaller collection. There's only about eight stories in it. Um, why I'm mentioning it under craft books particularly is that Butler has a very short intro to each story and then a mini essay after each story on her crafting of that particular story. So Blood Child, and I've taught uh, Blood Child, it's really kind of a wonderful book to walk through um, for yourself because you read the story, you get to think about how the story, how the story hits you, what you're getting from the story, and then you get to look at the kinds of issues Butler was thinking about, the kinds of challenges she faced as she was writing that story. And I think it, it just makes a really wonderful setup um, as you continue your education in the craft of science fiction writing. So, Inspiration, um, Blood Child by Octavia Butler, um, Writing Science Fiction and Fantasy by the editors of Asimov's and Analog, and Walter Mosley's This Year You Write Your Novel. Uh, I am going to say a couple of other things about craft books. I love them. I'm one of those people who just thinks it's so fun to hear how other writers think through this kind of mysterious process. Uh, but craft books can have a negative consequence. It is possible. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me to a lesser extent. Um, it is possible to read craft books and decide that, oh, you couldn't possibly do that. Oh no, that's how I have to do it. Oh gosh, I can't do it that way, I can't be a writer. Don't do that to yourself. No, 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 no. In any situation, in any, in, in any instructional context, but particularly since this is you self-educating um, with some, uh, recommendations and facilitation from me, um, take what works for you from any given craft book. And the great thing about reading a lot of craft books is you're going to see a lot of advice from a lot of different writers, a collection of essays like this one on um, from the editors of Asimov and Analog will show you. No two writers agree on uh, most issues of writing process. Uh, so please don't use craft books to beat yourself up. Please, um, when you find yourself starting to do that and thinking, oh gosh, I'm, I don't do it that way, so I'm not a real writer, that's called imposter syndrome. And there's lots of good resources out there on how to identify that in yourself and some ways that you can start working through imposter syndrome. Um, I don't suffer from it nearly as much as I used to as a writer. I still have some imposter syndrome about teaching. If you see me get nervous on these videos, that's because this is the kind of thing where I think, do I really know anything worth sharing? And yeah, I think I do. Um, I'm gonna try over the next couple of years to share information with all of you. Um, but know that when you feel like Oh, I couldn't possibly. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That's your anxiety talking. That's imposter syndrome talking. That's not reality. The reality is if you sit down and write, particularly if you sit down and write regularly, that's what makes you a writer. Really, really. So on that happy note, um, I have given you some great 
craft recommendations, um, some more fiction recommendations, because got to read, got to read to write. Um, and uh, I guess I can say, as uh, you know, I started these videos kind of thinking, all right, I'll just figure this out as I go. Um, I will say I'm doing a little more planning ahead right now. So I will be, I'm putting a kind of syllabus together. The idea is gonna be that uh, I will give you, I've already given you homework. Go find short stories to read and now go find craft books to read. Um, but you're gonna start hearing me check word counts on these videos. You're gonna start hearing me say, okay, so now if you're at about this point in your book, um, yeah, I'm starting to lay out syllabus materials in a way that will support you through the drafting of a novel over a period of months and then through the revision of a, a novel, ostensibly a first novel, but maybe not, um, over the period of another, three month, another few months. So we will see where that takes us. Happy writing. Bye-bye.